Thank you very much, uh, Tracy. It's certainly an honor to be able to present here. And it's actually an interesting observation for me. It's kind of, I feel like, a virgin. Because I'm the first to be able to say the word E10 in a clinical setting. Uh, it's been held under guard for a long time, and this is the first time other than some of the key GE people I've been able to use that term. So thank you, Tracy, for allowing me to do that now. Uh, but actually, it's a really good opportunity to talk about it a system in one focus on it, because I'm not able to talk about all people who have an opportunity at 12 o'clock to hear from three other uh, well-known individuals talking about uh, more of the aspects of uh, the E10, as well as I think Dr. Abraham and a couple other people who will be in the Meet the Expert series talk about what capabilities are on the system. You know, I was asked to talk about BCIA recently. And uh, for a while, I couldn't spell VSA, but I learned a lot about VSA and kind of how to do it. What I want to share with you is something that I think is an important contribution, not simply when you're looking at 3D and certain components of diagnostic capabilities, but in reality, almost like a, an extended 2D transistor for the capabilities that it will allow us to do. So here's the system. You see the system. Uh, in the Biosun Club, and I will be glad to answer questions afterwards in the Biosun Club for a while. I'll stay back there if you have specific questions for me about technology that I've seen capable with this and other transducers. Uh, the EM6C, which you see here, is an electronic uh, transducer that I will be uh, talking about. Um, it is uh, a system that will really help us uh, in, in really moving and advancing our technology and diagnostic capabilities further. Uh, VCAA is, uh, is a part of a 3D, and I don't like to use 4D, but 3D uh, capabilities that, that allow us to look at the uh, speckle reduction in a better, better way. It definitely enhances, I'll show you many examples of how it enhances contrast resolution. Uh, and the nice thing about it is it allows us to vary the slices, how thick we want it, how thin we want it, and what we're trying to do, what diagnostic purpose we're using for a particular situation. For example, with bones and ribs, if you want a wider cut, you'll be able to see more aspects of the bones. I'll show you some examples. Um, it's really the scanning together of these two tech, 2D uh, rendered images that are there that allow you to give a selectable on ourselves, as I said, in this A plane. And this is just a, a cartoon of the EM6C transducer. Uh, you'll go in, in the Bison Club, pick it up, see it. It's a, different shape, uh, different size, certainly a little bit bigger, because it has a great deal, much more power than the uh, uh, traditional 3D transducer that you use, such as the Blue, Blue App 6 and 4A. Um, the thick slice gives us more capabilities than the mechanical transducers, um, because mechanical transducers really have a limitation uh, of the framework to which they can go compared to the electronic transducer that now will be much faster framework will allow you to capture more images in a, sh in a shorter period of time and thus improving the resolution. Um, if we look at bony structures, and that was something I demonstrated yesterday in the live scan session, um, I can officially tell you, yes, it was on the E10 uh, system, but you didn't hear that word yesterday. Um, it, it really allows us to capture more of the detail and, and capabilities. It allows us to make easier diagnosis. Looking at, I'll show you, counting ribs, uh, uh, looking at spines, looking at the way that the body formation of uh, all the long bones, which is a, a responsibility that we all have to capture uh, and make sure that we don't miss something like focal thumb or hypophagia when we're looking at the long bones. One of the tibia, fibula, radius only, not just the femur, just the numerous that we think we measure for growth. There's a whole lot of other information in those bony characteristics. The contrast resolution that you see between different uh, structures, the lung, liver, is simply beautiful on this technology, and it will allow us to, to leave, leave ourselves with a greater uh, confidence in our diagnostic capabilities along the way. Uh, and again, as I said, removing noise is what we've been trying to do all along because it helps us in that regard as well. Just one comment about the differences between the frame rates, between uh, the, the grab uh, 6 uh, and the EM6C. I mean, both of these are beautiful transducers, but what the electronic transducer does is just allows us to capture more in a shorter period of time, doubling the frame rate effectively in that period of time. So you have to understand the technology that is in this transducer itself. 
So here's some examples of the first trimester. We'll use the rest of this time to show you examples. You can see just the contrast, the, the contrast resolution that you see on your right in the VCIA capture of volume contrast imaging. Just look at the heart, for example, compared to the left, which is not a complete like the 2D, but the exquisite nature of what you see within the heart is better. Here's another example of the same. Um, and you just see the capturing of, of what the resolution will be within the, it's an 11 of the fetus, and you compare it to what you see here on the left side. Certainly, you have some beautiful illustrations of that as we go forward. Look at the, the, the limb, look at the, the, the bony structures, look at the demarcation of the, uh, uh, the skin itself and the tissue within the, the arm itself and the capturing of the, uh, uh, the digits and the faces that will show more examples as we go further along. You can see that so eloquently uh, and it captures the interfaces so beautifully and shows the, the contrast between the other pictures. This is just a 2D image. I can tell you this is what you would see on 2D itself. This is a volume of contrast image. And just look at, because of the thick nature of the slice that you have, being able to count the digits looking at the phalanges, and each of them along the way, we talk about absence of a fifth finger, uh, uh, this thing about a carpal, uh, phalanges that are there. You can see that they've exquisitely seen this throughout. You also see the loss of, uh, of the, in, the little noise that you see within the fluid on the left compared to what you see in the EM60 on the right. Here's a, a live demonstration of the same thing. You can see as the fetus goes wrong, capturing it in live motion, the ability to see these structures that kind of went by at a slower frame rate is much more eloquent than the EM60 transducer as we see that along the way. Here's just another example of the hand floating front. You can see your baby looking at the head. You've got to pay much more careful attention to your image because it's going to be there. It's going to surface. I think you can do is freeze it, go back and capture in the freeze frame, and go back and see what you want, that you have so much detail within the image. This is another illustration of a, a beautiful uh, hand. And uh, you can see the, 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 the uh, uh, radius all up beautifully. You can see the flanges, see the hands again. So a beautiful illustration uh, along the way uh, that you can't see as well if you're looking at 2D imaging or even a thinner slice on the left side. Looking at the spine itself, look at the inner spine's processes here, the, the spacing between the two, you look at the heart, you have beautiful contrast resolution, and we'll show more examples of the differences as we go down to the steel body. What is the nature of the iliac bones, the spine, the spinal processes, the ribs, the, inner, the spacing between the ribs, the uh, nature of what the ribs look like, recognizing that sometimes they're beaded, uh, uh, spy, uh, ribs that may be suggestive of some of the different skeletal dysplasias, the way it looks, the thickness, the size, uh, exquisite in terms of what you'll see in the capture with EM6C, particularly, and this is just done a, a one simple sweep through it, seeing how beautifully you see the OA bone demonstrated for you. Here you not only see the spine with the same PCIA, you can capture with the resolution you see within the steel kidney. This is a 20-week fetus, and you can see that uh, throughout just simply standing up and down and seeing things so beautifully along the way. Again, differences between the PCIA, what you see within the bones, and what you capture on the exact same area, the same freeze time, and the bifold image that you have there. So I'm going to show some cases. And I don't mind if you speak out, it's okay. Uh, here's an example of a case recently, this is uh, a week and a half ago. And uh, for some of you, you may capture it right away, others may be confused, and that's okay too. Uh, but I want you to pay attention, I'm going to go through a series of four images, and I'll come back on them for you to see. But you'll then focus on really what this transducer can do for you, what the system allows us to do to really refine and improve our diagnostic capabilities. So here is this layer is indeed the, the lower limbs that the only thing we've done yet. And lower limbs are typically attached at the hip and move forward up. So we'll have that. And let's go to the next image and see if we can see the differences. Again, we're going to look here. Now we're going up a little bit, fetus. But I wanted to see how you, this again, this is 11 week fetus. And I want 
to show you the fine detail of what you can see, the resolution that you now have capability of the transition. Anybody want to show the diagnosis for me? I'll be happy to read to you. What's that? Yes, 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 yes. It's a serena million. Serena million, right? That, that, that is indeed correct. Um, we'll give them one cup of coffee and the value is not but that's okay. Uh, but I think very clearly it is indeed serena million. But now I want you to carefully look at this image that we're going up here, even on this one. Okay? Look, look at the spine here. Remember how short it is. What do you see here? What happened here to here? It's caudal regression syndrome. And part of the caudal regression syndrome, okay, is serenomelia. So not only do you have the, the fused legs that you see here, because you have the two, uh, uh, in the tibia and fibula fused around each other, you actually also have quantivarus there, and you have actually a genesis of the lower part of the spine. So you have a, caudal, a genesis of caudal regression syndrome there, but exquisitely able to make this diagnosis at 11 weeks. Uh, without a doubt, but let me see. Now, I'm going to point out something I want you to see, as you must know, or should know, that when the skull is developed, there's 250 different ossification centers within the development of the skull. So if you carefully look at your image, if you carefully look at what you're standing, you might once in a while find something like this little subtle change here that you probably say, oh, it must be the orbit. Let me tell you the orbit better not be on the top of the head. Because that's in the wrong place. But I want you to look here. Just keep looking at this slide in there. And as you go through, just take a look at the subtlety right there. This is the kind of resolution that we're seeing with this transducer in looking at imaging of the skull. I showed yesterday in the demonstration how beautiful you can see the different suture lines, and we'll show some of that again. But looking here, you begin to wonder is this a bony defect that's normal, or is it developmental delay, which it probably is? Because you have to worry about could this be some form of an unusual encephalosteel, particularly if it's in the back part of the head, which it may be there. So if you look at another example of the same observation, see there's the orbit. You can just see throughout the skull, you see this, here's the suture line beautifully uh, throughout. You're able to pick up some of the very subtle changes that are there that would not otherwise allow us to do that without really careful, careful inspection of that people that would be typically don't get to see. But DCIA is so easy to use to look at the entire skull, look at the development, that it really is a very helpful aid in our diagnostic armamentarium. This is uh, just an image of showing you the contrast between what DCIA here with sepia, and this is not a DCIA, it's more apparent like a 2D image. But you can see the differences of the noise reduction Spuckle reduction within the ventricles itself is showing up here. Now, if we look at it in 2D here on the left and the BCIA, look at the exquisite nature of that heart. How it removes the noise that you want to see, improves, in fact, the apparent resolution that you can see just looking at it. So, BCIA can be used for the 2D transducer as well to help you make diagnosis in the, in the heart. And you're going to see some beautiful demonstrations at the new presentation by uh, Dr. Charlie and Dr. DeVore looking at the heart with this technology. Just another example of how I use this transition almost like my 2D because it gives me the enhanced capabilities at the same time as I've done scan. And I scan every single patient myself. So it's not as if I don't be sonographers to do, but every patient has a complete scan done by all of us in our group. So it's uh, perhaps a bit atypical for the U.S. But Around the world, it's not a typical thing. We're, we're kind of more that way. Look at, look at the exquisite nature of the, and the very sensitive nature, how you can see the, the, the suture lines. Look at the, the topic suture here beautifully, but just a simple stamp. I don't have to get the suitors in very, very different directions. I don't have to re render, which you can certainly do beautifully if you use a 3D multi planar rendering for it for sure. But here is just, again, I put this on the skeletal mode, allows me to see the bones of the head very, very well, and gives me. It's a very good information. I could identify the bones there, I could identify premature closures. Patients, uh, you know, who in our population, we have a lot of elderly fathers, not just mature women. Uh, and we know that there are higher incidents, not only in general heart disease, 
but also the scale of those branches. Here's just another example of this. If you look here, you begin to see how well, just showing that same sweep, I extended this a little bit, just to show you, if you look on your, what the VCA will do with other suture binding, look at the fontanelles there, close to your occipital region, the basal occipital sutures, and how beautifully you see that illustrated in the bony development of this young fetus. So again, a very simple tool to make these diagnostic enhancements. Uh, you're going to hear more, as I said, but just to show you that we can use the version mode of BCIA, beautiful illustration of the uh, arch. You can see the best is going to the head here. Uh, sort of a fluoroscopic, ultrasonic way of looking at the fetus, if you would. And this technology is here for this as well. Here is a just demonstration of four chamber view. And if you know, even the, the papillary muscle that you see here is sort of space occupying region within this inversion mode. So exquisitely seeing the detail of what's in the heart now demonstrated so nicely with this technology. And I'm at the end, share with you where I think this could go for our use in the future. How about the placenta? Look at the way we can even look at, investigate the placenta. The imaging that allows us to do, to see these things so beautifully for ourselves. Just compare and contrast what we can see resolution-wise in the intercotyledon spaces that we can see within the, the structures here. So just an example, it's not just the bones, it's not just the heart, it's not just the kidney, it also helps us in that as well. GYN, for some of you that do GYN, I do about 20 to 30 percent of my work is GYN. Uh, just to show you how beautifully just using on the uh, five, 5 to 9 transducer, you can certainly see an illustration of a nice IUD within the uterine cavity. Uh, beautifully illustrated here in this example. Or perhaps this ovary. I mean, just look at the beautiful detail that you see in the ovarian structures and compare and contrast what you see here, taking some of the noise out, looking directly within the cyst of the ovary, and the ratchet cyst with the formations of the clot that you see, watching clot resolution almost over time, that will make a difference. But the, uh, again, the resolution is certainly beautiful using this technology. This is not the, uh, the obviously, the EM6C transducer. Uh, a little bit too big to use for a petrol transducer. Uh, but certainly VCIA capabilities on that transducer as well is this beautiful uh, new use of how we think of it. Unknown case two for you guys. This is all of you to help me. This is inversion mode. What am I inverting? What does it look like? And I'm going to show you how you begin to look at any one structure in a very different way using this technology. So maybe this doesn't help me make this diagnosis, but you'll see how the transducer itself does by showing you exploiting the capability within itself. Anybody want to shout out what they think that is? Huh? True knot in the court. True knot in the court. What kind of knot was it? Another knot. knot. Okay, so let's look. So indeed, you're right, it is a cord. I'm not going to convince you one way or the other whether it's a knot yet or not, but certainly you can see kind of an unusual appearance of that. But when we go here, what do we see here? See some beautiful illustrations of what HDI Live can do for us and looking at the imaging. Again, you'll see much more of that a little bit later from uh, uh, Bernard Benoit. And then if you look at the sort of like, chrom chromatically change, what this looks like, we have that capability as, as well as uh, on the transducer. But let's look here for a second. And as you see here, um, this is 4D, the live demonstration of what is a monoamniotic twin with lots of cord uh, involvement in each other, certainly cord, major cord entanglement in this particular one. This is missing one. Skip it, I don't know why I skipped it, but okay, we'll go back. Um, this is another case. Let's see if you can help me with this one. Anybody? Gastrostasis. No? Partial mole. Okay, let's look at that. That was a very good observation of BCA, what you can see here. But indeed, what you see there is a subtle change. The contrast of what you can see, how well you can see and demarcate all these unusual appearances within the placenta itself. You might think it's a mole, but you need to think about two other major diagnoses when you think about it. This is an IVF pregnancy. And when you see here, there's a fetus here. So one thing you should think about is could it be trichoidy? It could be, because their placenta looks that way as well. Um, but there's also something that 
think about when you see something like this, and that is uh, placental mesenchymal dysplasia, something that has a really a change of methylation defects in the fetus, higher incidence of baby with Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome, and very commonly uh, associated with, as I said, with IVF. So when you see those unusual appearances, you can now turn to something like this. Again, something capable on this machine with, with silhouette. We'll see much more of that later. But that's actually what the placenta looks like. And you start to use some of the features within the system itself and ourselves. So what does the future hold for us? I, I kind of think of, when I look at the VCIA, I kind of think of opportunities. And I think of opportunities that, that really will be helpful to all of us. Uh, one happens to be looking at, for example, an inversion mode, looking at the lungs, the vascularization of lungs. We think about the uh, cystic adenomatoid malformation of the lung versus uh, uh, other changes within the center of the, uh, the uh, uh, sequestration, pulmonary sequestration. Perhaps looking at that and the sort of change that you see in the microvasculature may be something that over time will become extremely helpful as an added advantage, as an added feature that will make a difference for all of us along the way. So, do I think the EN6C transducer makes a difference for all of us? You bet I did. I think because of its high volume rate and the uh, capability of the brain rates that gives us, I think it can be used as a real-time capability like no other transducer that I've used. Uh, the system itself, as you know, has many other features, including uh, biplane, and it has many other features like both the silhouette that you see there, and I think I have one picture here that might share some of that with you. Uh, these are capabilities of the silhouetting, and I'm sure you're going to see some artistic pictures and images from Dr. Benoit at 12 o'clock, but very clearly the features are there for each of us to exploit. Uh, and I know that, that Robbie Chow, who I've talked to and the before, and others who have used it, and others have clearly know that each of us can find one, two, three new things almost every day that we use it that really make a difference in our clinical scanning and our capabilities. I'm sure that. Over time, we'll really appreciate it. And over time, if you find things that you think are helpful and end up using the system, we appreciate hearing about it as well because we learn from you and we hope you learn from me. I'll be glad, as I said, to take questions now. And if you're rushing out and want to catch me for the license, I'll be next half hour. I'll certainly stay around to answer those questions. Thank you very much.